Hey guys, we're going to talk about RTI progress monitoring. Now, as you saw in the earlier video, RTI is what's called response to intervention. And this is in preparation for our first assignment that you're going to be doing, uh, looking at progress monitoring and how to monitor students and what that means. So response to intervention, it's an instructional approach with two purposes. We want to have early intervention services and we want to identify those with learning disabilities. So there's four elements of the RTI that we always have that high quality instruction for all students. That's our one frequent progress monitoring of how students are progressing and increasing levels of intervention. If we're finding that instructional strategies aren't working, which means that we are using data based decision making for our choices. So the benefits of RTI, first off, we have early intervention. You've got the idea that we can identify students early rather than waiting for a gap to, um, to, to arise between their ability level and um, their, their um, academic performance. And then we're also going to be using assessment data, and that's going to support all of our instructional decisions through this. You're going to have a reduction of inappropriate special education placements because we're able to monitor and adjust our instruction to help students on lower tiers rather than moving them right to special education. And it, this increases um, the research-based practice that we have within our classroom. So first off, here's what our tiers look like. We've got universal screening. So this is given to all students, brief screening measure, and this is given anywhere from one to three times a year, fall, winter, spring. And it's here that we identify students at risk for academic failure. Then we have tier one, and in tier one, all students receive high quality instruction through uh, different practices in the general education setting. Teachers are going to do frequently uh, every one to two weeks. Most of the probes we're going to see in the scenarios are going to be every week. They're going to monitor the student's progress of those who have been struggling during the uh, universal screening progress. And so um, sometimes in some places, universal screening is part of tier one, but not all places. Tier two, if we have students who are not making adequate progress, they're going to receive extra or additional support from either the classroom teacher or another professional, and teachers are going to continue to monitor their student progress. If they're still not making sufficient progress in tier two, they're going to receive even more intense and individualized instruction. And then depending on a state's or a district's policy, this instruction can be provided through general or special education. So with progress monitoring, you're going to have frequent administration. In, like I said, the scenarios we're going to look at, it's once a week. And you're going to be using probes to test what students have learned and how they've grown. And then you're going to have assessment, assessment again after you change your instruction um, to see if that's going to um, increase the student's uh, understanding of the concepts. And the benefits of it, students who are part of the RTI uh, model, they have higher grades, they're aware of their own performance, better learning. Teachers can make very quick and instructional changes to help them grow because of that constant testing. And it actually is predictive of what students will achieve on their standardized test scores. So when we're monitoring for implementation, you always want to select an appropriate probe for the grade or your skill level. Sometimes the school will tell you what probe you need to use. Other times you have to decide it for yourself. And then you need to administer and score that uh, probe at regular intervals. Then you're going to graph the, the scores and work with the students to set the goals and then make instructional decisions based on the data and then finally communicate progress with the students and parents and and other professionals in the school so connection to rti frequent progress monitoring that's a key component across the board in, in tier one progress monitoring probes can be used for the universal screening and this is how we're going to try to identify students who might be struggling academically and then you're going to use progress monitoring anywhere um, from five to eight weeks on these students consistently to see if they would benefit from tier two, a more intense targeted level of instruction or, or not. And then if they are yet yeah, moved to tier two, progress monitoring is then determined, used to determine whether a student is responding to this extra help during tier two. And in tier three, if they move to there, 
Um, this tends to be uh, moving students towards special education. It's used to determine whether students meeting an IEP goal, whether teachers need to make instructional changes, and progress monitoring data can also use to help determine if the student could be successful if moved back to a tier one or a tier two status. So in kindergarten, one of the uh, most basic probes is the letter sound fluency. So the kids are given a sheet of random letters and just asked to say as many sounds corresponding to the letters as possible in one minute. And yet one of the downsides is you have to give this to each student individually. Then you've got um, word identification fluency, and this is in first grade, and the students asked to read aloud as many words as possible in one minute. And the words are randomly selected from a list of the 500 most frequent sight words. And again, the problem is this has to be administered individually. And then mid first grade through sixth grade, you're going to switch to a passage reading fluency. And the student's going to read a passage aloud for one minute. The passage's difficulty is based on the student's expected end of year reading competence. And the score is the number of words he or she read correctly in a minute. And again, this has to be administered individually. Now, it's not just in those lower elementary. This is also used fourth through sixth grade. We move to what's called maze fluency, and the student's going to read a passage silently for two and a half minutes. And in the passage, every seventh word has been deleted, and they're going to be offered three possible choices. The student will circle the word that best fits the meaning or and phrase of the sentence in the passage, and the student scores the number of correct replacements he or she makes. The nice thing about this one is this can be administered to a group of students. So here's an example of what they look like. So there's uh, the word identification fluency all the way on the left. Um, the reading passage fluency, which is, uh, again, that starting in mid first grade, and then the maze fluency with the missing uh, words and those word options that students can choose from as they're moving into middle grades. Now, reading fluency probes, how do we do this? So words read correctly are scored as correct. A number is going to be counted as a word, and words that are mispronounced, omitted, or substituted, or, or reversed are counted as errors. And then repetitions or insertions are ignored. So a student, if they repeat a word or they insert an extra word, it's not counted as ignored. If a student self-corrects within three seconds, the word is going to be counted as correct. However, if a student hesitates longer than three seconds, the word is provided by the teacher and then it's going to be counted as an error. So let's see what this looks like in practicality. So this would be the teacher's directions. I want you to read the story for me. You'll have one minute to read. When I say begin, start reading aloud at the top of the page. Do your best reading. If you have trouble with a word, I'll tell it to you. Do you have any questions? Well, then the student's going to go and they're going to read. Now, you'll notice that you'll see uh, a slash here coming through a word and then another word and then the brackets right here. The slash is going to mean that this student said this word incorrectly and the bracket is where they completed. You'll notice the numbers here on the side of the page and what this does is this corresponds to the number of words as you're moving down each line in the passage. So we're at 12 words. 25, 40, 51, 64, 75 if they finish the whole passage. But this student didn't do 75 words correctly. We know that they got to here, so there's two words they didn't do. So we have to subtract two from 75, which would be 73. And then if we see here, there's two more words they got wrong, so we take another two off. So now they're down to 71 words correctly. But we'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. So here, this is what this means. So she admitted the word her, so lost a point. For the word downtown, she self-corrected, no points were lost. Down here, whether the student hesitated, and so the teacher provided the word and inserted the word all in here. Remember insertions, they don't lose points. So the student scored 71 out of a possible 73 words correctly. Now, response to intervention. What are benefits for the teachers? It allows us to monitor a student's progress, and it offers us a means to evaluate 
whether or not an instructional program we're using is actually effective because we're getting continual data. It provides the teacher with a visual, visual aid with which to effectively communicate with students and parents because when you're graphing this out, as you'll see in a minute, it makes it so easy to understand results. It gives students a visual representation of their progress and shows students through specific feedback that their hard work pays off. And it allows students to set goals for themselves. So what you wanna do, you wanna make sure you're graphing results every time. And I realize this is not a math lesson, but we are gonna to have to go over some basic math um, uh, uh, vocabulary at this point. So we have on graphs, we have what's called our x-axis and our y-axis. Our x is going to be our weeks of instruction, and you'll see that down here at the bottom of the screen. And our y-axis is gonna be the range of our possible scores over here. And what we do is we find the intersection of the instructional week and the score the students had. So in week one, they had a 10. In week 12, they had a 30. So you can see it, and then what you do is connect each of the data points by a line. So you see how it sort of moves up and down, and so you can see how the student has grown in their progression. Well, looking at it, it looks like a student has grown, but how do we monitor if that growth is enough? What we have to do is to figure out where the student should be. So you'll see the blue is the goal line. This tells us where Samaria should be. So she should be reading 65 words correctly. However, when we look down here by the end of the goal, we see at this point at 16 weeks though, she should be reading about 55 words correctly. But in reality, she's only reading about 51 words correctly. So she's not quite at the goal yet. So you can see this is her progression. This is our goal line in blue. And this dotted line here shows where we've had a change of instruction. So you can see before this line, this is tier one. After the line, you can see she has moved to tier two. So the range of scores is going to vary depending on the probe. So letter sound fluency and word identification, you can get 0 to 100. When you get to passage reading fluency, you can get up to 200. And maze fluency, you can max out at 60 points. So how do we graph these points? So if we're looking here, locate week 7 on the x-axis and 24 on the y. And where 7 and 24 intersect, we're going to put a point. Draw a line from the last data point to the current data point. So we're connecting week six and week seven. So that's how we're going to actually plot the lines. So to get that goal, we have to find out what the goal is by the end of the year. So kindergarten, they should be able to do 40 letter sounds per minute by the end of the year. So if we look at by the end of the semester, they should be able to do 20 letter sounds. So you're breaking down where they need to be through the semester to help them set those goals. Now, after goals are established, you want to show the end of year goal or the short term goal on that graph. You want to determine the median, which is the middle when you're looking at math terms of the first three scores. So we're going to talk a minute and how to find median, but median, you're finding the middle of the first three scores taken. Then you wanna find the intersection of the median and the goal line and draw the goal line between the median and the short-term goal. So what would that look like? So week one, 40 words per minute, week two, 44, week five, 43. If we look at these numbers, lowest to highest, our week two is our middle, our median. So what we wanna do is under week two, this is where our goal line is going to start. We had 44 right there at week two. So that's our first where we're going to start for our goal line. Now, if the student's performance is exceeding expectations, you'll see the student is above the goal line. If the student's not meeting expectations, you'll see the student is below the goal line. If the student is on target to meet the expectations, you'll see they're hovering right around that goal line. So it gives you an idea of how your student is doing visually. So parent communication is very important 
Family involvement is one of the most important factors of student success, and it creates a collaboration between parents and students. You want to show parents the instruction that you've done and the changes you've made and the changes in the student's progress. And you want to meet parents when a major instruction change happens or when a more intensive tier is needed. You want to tell parents how their child is progressing compared to their past achievement, how the child is progressing compared to the norm and goals that you want the child to meet by the end of the year. So here we're looking at Steve's graph. Steve right here is where he is right now. That's the goal. If you were meeting with the parents, you would want to talk to the parents about how Steve's such a hard worker. He's giving so much effort, but he's just having difficulty meeting that goal. And so you feel a change in placement might be necessary moving them to a tier two. So here's a scenario for you. Savannah is a first grade student at Rosa Parks Elementary School. When her teacher, Mr. Hudson, administered the fall screening measure, Savannah's scores fell below the established beginning of the year benchmark. Because Savannah's scores indicated she may be struggling in reading, Mrs. Hudson monitors her reading performance for seven weeks using Vanderbilt World Identification Fluency Probe. The seven-week benchmark at Savannah's school is 15 words per minute. Savannah's scores are below that number. So let's take a look here at Savannah. The goal is 15 words per minute, and we look at weeks one, two, and three, the first weeks of score, and if we put them in order, we have four, seven, nine, and our middle number is seven. So here, under uh, week three, because that's where the seven took place, I'm going to put my goal line right there. And it said her goal by the end of the seven weeks is reading 15 words correctly. I apologize, but this is not going to be the prettiest line. So here is our goal line for Savannah. She middle, the median number, the middle at seven, and then up here. So now let's look at where Savannah actually is. Um, Savannah, week one, she had a four. Week two, she had a nine. Week three was that seven again. Week four was a nine. Week five was a seven. Week six was a 10. And week seven was a 12. And so we connect all of Savannah's dots. And we see that she is making some progress, but she's not quite where she needs to be yet. So perhaps a change in intervention is needed. Grayson is a second grade student at Mayflower Elementary School. When Grayson's teacher, Miss Dorian, administered the screening probe, he didn't meet the benchmark. Because of this, Miss Dorian monitored Grayson's progress in reading over the next eight weeks. At the end of the period, the school assessed to meet Grayson's data. He was referred to tier two. Another weeks have passed since Grayson started tier two. So let's see how he is doing. So we look here, here's his tier one data. Tier two data, we have week nine was at 36, week 10 was at 37, week 11 was at 39, then 40, 41, 43, 45, and 47. It looks like he's making progress, but we've got to go and put in what his goal is to see where he actually is in relation to this line. So the goal we can see is 50 words per minute. So by week 16, he should be reading 50 words a minute. When we look at his first three scores, 30, 31, and 33, this is our middle score, our median. And so this is what we're going to use for our goal line here for Grayson. And that's where he's progressing underneath. We can see he's starting to close the gap once he's been on tier two. Sam is a third grade student in Miss Lemler's class. As the middle of the year approaches, Miss Lemler conducts the universal second screening measure with all her students. To do so, Miss Lemler uses the Vanderbilt passage uh, reading passage, sorry, passage reading fluency probe. Below are the rules she follows to score Sam's probe as well as her teacher form with notations indicating Sam's performance. So here, words that are read correctly are scored correctly. A number's counted as a word. This is review. 
words that are mispronounced, omitted, substituted, or reversed are counted as errors. Repetitions and insertions are ignored. If a student corrects, self-corrects within three seconds, the word is counted. If they hesitate longer than three, the word's provided. So here we can see she mispronounced beautiful, skipped the word they, mispronounced citizen, she repeated into, added the word very, that's what that little triangle means, um, did not get tangled correct, did not get muzzle correct, and finished at the word short. So her benchmark is 55. Where is Sam in relation to that? Well, this line says 69, and she had one, two, three, four, five. 69 minus five is she's at 64. But did she have 64 words correct? Well, our answer would be no. And we can look here at where she did wrong. So words that are skipped um, or um, in, insertions, repetitions, we don't count those. Um, or I'm sorry, words that are omitted and skipped, we, we do count those as wrong. So here we can see beautiful, citizens, they, into was a repeat, that doesn't count it. Very was an addition, doesn't get counted. Tangled and muzzled. So totally have one, two, three, four, five. So we have to subtract another five off of this. 64 minus five is going to be 59. If the benchmark was 55, Sam is successfully meeting, exceeding that benchmark. So Samaria, a third grade student, has been struggling with reading for many years. She recently transferred to a school that's implementing the RTI approach. After Samaria scored below the benchmark on the universal screening, her teacher, Mr. Brom, monitors her progress for 10 weeks. Her progress monitoring data in hand, the school support team recommends Tier 2, which Samaria goes on to receive for 12 weeks. The team meets again to determine how she's responding to Tier 2. Afterwards, Mr. Braun plans to meet with Samaria's parents to discuss her performance and the team's um, recommendation. So here we can see this is where Samaria was after her first um, round with Tier 1. You can see the change. There is Tier 2, and now we need to determine where she is for Tier 3. So her graphs for the next couple weeks are 55, then we have 60, 63, 62, 66, and 67. So when we look at her progress, the second half of the monitoring, you can see she's now exceeding the expectations. So remember when we talked about parents, we want to communicate how the students are doing, how their hard work is paying off, what our um, team is recommending as far as placement, whether to continue in this tier or move down a tier. And so those are the points you want to communicate to your parents.